If I asked you to determine the cross product of two vectors in arbitrary directions, could you do it with what we've learned so far? What if I gave you these two vectors and asked you to determine their cross product? How would you determine the resultant vector? Well, you could take the magnitude of these two vectors and the angle in between them and use the formula a b sine theta to determine the magnitude of the resultant vector of the cross product, but how would you get the resultant vector's direction? You could try doing a right-hand rule for this to determine the direction, but you're not dealing with simple x hat, y hat, z hat, northeast, southwest vectors, so it's not going to be particularly easy to read off the direction of the cross product of two arbitrary vectors. That's why in this video we'll be covering the two mathematical techniques for taking the cross product of any two arbitrary vectors. So this first method um, for calculating exact cross products is the more commonly taught one. It's where you make a matrix and a determinant. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your two vectors in your cross product, let's say like A and B, you're going to put them in a three by three matrix. Um, and if any of the vectors is, uh, has only two dimensions, like let's say you have a two dimensional vector like this one B, it only has components in the X and Z hat direction you'll add a third one with component length zero because the cross product needs to happen in three dimensions. So to this vector B, I would add a third dimension in the Y hat direction, but I'd give it a component length of zero. So I'd do that just like this. Now what I'm gonna do to assemble my three by three matrix, um, I've kind of made it here. Um, I'm gonna make the first row, I'm just gonna make it X hat, Y hat, and z hat. That's how the cross product in the matrix form works. Then I'm going to make the second row of my matrix. I'm just going to make it each of the respective components of this first a vector. So that would be a1 in the x hat direction, a2 in the y hat direction, and a3 in the z hat direction. And I'll do the same thing for the vector b. So that's b1 in the x hat direction b2 in the z hat direction, and then b3, um, we actually don't have a b3, but in the y hat direction, this was only a two dimensional vector, in the y hat direction, we know that the component length is zero. So I'll put a zero in that y hat spot. So now I have my three by three matrix. Let's see what the next step is. So now that we have our um, matrix, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the determinant of it. And this is a three by three matrix and we're gonna take its determinant. And we represent that with these um, bars on it. And so taking the determinant of a three by three matrix is, um, it can be a bit involved, so let's see how to do that. So before we take the determinant of a three by three matrix, we should know how to take the determinant of a two by two matrix. And so the determinant, just think of it as some sort of operation uh, on, on a matrix. And so if you have some two by two matrix um, with A, B, C, and D, the determinant is simply the difference between the diagonals. So you take A times D, and then you take B times C, and you subtract this diagonal, B times C, from A times D. That's all the determinant of a two by two matrix is. But with this, we can determine the determinant of a three by three matrix. So the way we do the determinant of a three by three matrix is to decompose a three by three matrix into three different two by two matrices because we can calculate their determinants very easily with this formula. So what I do is I do something like an elimination and I'm gonna eliminate rows and columns and you'll see what I mean by that. But let's just, so I've filled up this example matrix uh, with U's, V's and W's and I wanted to take its determinant. And so what I'll do is I will eliminate row um, a row and a column for each of these elements in the top row. So I'm gonna start with this top row right here, and I'm gonna to come to U1, and I'm gonna eliminate the column with um, U1 in it. And by eliminate, I just mean I'm gonna ignore it. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing for the row with U1 in it. So now I see that inside here, this V2, V3, W2, W3, that itself, is I could make a two by two matrix out of that if I want, if I ignore everything with U1. And I'm gonna do that. And I'll put that right here um, with this term with the U1 as its coefficient. And so now I've eliminated the row and the column with U1. 
and I have a U1 times the remaining inside part of the matrix. Now, um, the next term in the expansion of the three by three determinant is this minus U2. And so you always have a minus sign when you're doing the second um, element of this determinant decomposition. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate or ignore the column with U2 in it. And I'm also going to ignore the row with U2 in it. And so what I'm left with are these four elements right here, V1, V3, W1, and W3. So I'll fill in my two by two determinant with that. Um, and now I'm going to do this for the final element in the um, matrix, in the first row of this matrix, this U3. I'm gonna eliminate this um, column with U3 in it, and I'll eliminate the row with U3 in it, or ignore the column in the row. And what I'm left with is V1, V2, W1, and W2. And so I'll put that in the third term of my expansion. And so that was a lot of information to know. And so it's good to look at an example of this. And so here we have an example. We have two vectors, 8x hat plus 6y hat plus 3z hat. Uh, and we're taking its cross product with the second vector, 4x hat minus 2y hat. And our first task using the matrix determinant method would be to fill out a three by three matrix with these two vectors where we have x hat, y hat, z hat in the first row, and we have the first vector in the second row and the third vector in the third row, and the second vector in the third row. Um, so I'm gonna put this first vector, eight in the x hat position, six in the y hat position, and three in the z hat position. And then for our second vector, we see that we have four in the x hat position, we have negative two in the y hat position, and in the z hat position, you might say we have nothing, but we need this to be a three dimensional vector. So we'll say we have a zero in the z hat position or there's a plus zero hat sitting there. And so our first step is to eliminate rows of this matrix, is to eliminate elements of this matrix so we can make smaller two by two matrices that are easy to take determinants of. So we'll start by eliminating the x hat element because our decomposition of this three by three matrix requires x hat times the leftover two by two minus y hat times the leftover two by two plus z hat times the leftover two by two, where x hat minus y hat and plus z hat are the elements of this first row. So eliminating the column in the x hat row, um, in the x hat, and I'm and eliminating the rest of the row, I'm left with six, three, negative two, and zero as the determinant that we need to take. So I will add this here, six, three, negative two, and zero. And so now I'm gonna do the same thing for y hat. I will eliminate this column and I will eliminate the x hat and the z hat that are in our way. And we see what we're left with is these four elements here, which are eight, three, four, and zero. So let's add that here. And finally, what we wanna do is eliminate the column with z hat in it and eliminate the row with z hat in it, and what we're left with is eight, six, four, and negative two. So I will add that to our final two by two matrix right here. And now what we wanna do is we just wanna work out the math. We have three two by two matrices, each multiplied by an x hat, and y hat, and z hat, and we just wanna calculate them. So recall the calculating a two by two matrix is taking this multiplying the, these two diagonal elements and then subtracting these two diagonal elements from them. So six times zero minus uh, three times negative two is zero minus negative six, which is just six. And then we have an X hat multiplying it. And then we have eight times zero is zero minus three times four, which is zero minus 12. And um, so we have a minus 12 and then in front of our minus 12, we have a negative y hat. So that's minus 12, negative y hat, but I might as well just write this as 12 plus 12 y hat. So I'll do that. And then finally, for our third matrix right here, we have eight times negative two is negative 16, minus six times four, which is 24. So we have negative 16 minus 24, that is negative 40. And we of course have a Z hat 
multiplying that. And that gives us our resultant vector, which is 6x hat plus 12y hat minus 40z hat. The magnitude and direction is encoded in this vector. You can find either of those if you need. The direction maybe by some sort of plotting, the magnitude by adding in quadrature. So this next method for calculating the cross product exactly is what I'm going to call the cyclic right-hand rule method. And this one is less commonly taught in my experience. But what you're going to do is you're going to write out your uh, vectors that you want to take the cross product of. So you want to do A cross B. Write them out in your x hat, y hat, z hat form for some coordinate system that you've defined. Um, so here I'm just going to do a standard right-hand coordinate system, x hat, y hat, and z hat. And then what you want to do is you want to take these two vectors and you're going to treat them kind of like they are polynomials. And what you're going to do is you're going to multiply them out. You're going to foil them. You're going to expand them. And so I'll show you what I mean by that. So I've written out my two vectors in x hat, y hat, z hat form, and they're crossing into each other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to term by term just multiply everything out. So I have, I'm going to foil um, if that's the way you learn things. So I'm going to do uh, a1. So these two terms right here, multiply them like so a1, b1, and then there's a x hat cross an x hat um, in, on top of this a1, b1. So I'll indicate that. Then I'll move on to the next term that a1 multiplies, and so that's a1, b2, um, and then there's an x hat cross a y hat. So we'll write that out. And you would continue this expansion um, for the rest of the terms in this, um, in these two quote unquote polynomials. And you just keep doing that and that would get you the answer. And so what you'll see here is that we have these terms x hat cross x hat, x hat cross y hat. They symbolize some sort of direction and we have to work them out. So we should come to the side and think about um, what directions they symbolize and if we can find any patterns or shortcuts here. And so here on the right hand side, I've worked through all the different possible unit vector cross products that you could have with the right hand rule. And so when you're expanding this, um, these two vectors, you might see uh, cross products you have to do like x hat cross y hat, y hat cross z hat, etc. cetera. And um, these can all be calculated with the right hand rule. For example, um, the first one, x hat cross y hat, um, I can calculate with the right hand rule. I'm gonna use one method, the palm push method. I'll put my thumb um, in the direction of x hat. I'll put my uh, all four of my fingers in the direction of y hat and my palm is pushing um, up out of the page. That's the direction of Z hat. Um, and so you can, I'll leave it as an exercise to work the rest of these out. You should work them out. Um, but you can also, also we know the fact that a cross product of a vector with itself, the cross product of X hat cross X hat, Y hat cross Y hat, those are all going to be zero because the two vectors, because uh, X hat is parallel to X hat and Y hat is parallel to Y hat. So those will all be the zero vector. And with this information, we can come up with a very useful mnemonic for um, quickly calculating these cross products. And that is this, to make this sort of circle kind of thing uh, with x hat, y hat, and z hat, and draw some arrows in between them. And what you'll see is that this is a sort of circle between x hat, y hat, and z hat. And if you're going in the direction of circulation of the circle, if you're doing x hat cross y hat, then the result will be z hat, just like we have up here. However, if you're going against the direction of circulation, then you'll add a negative sign. So if you're doing y hat cross x hat, then the result will be the third remaining unit vector, but it will be that with a negative sign, so negative z hat. So here, z hat cross x hat, let's say I'm going in the direction of circulation, so that should be plus y hat. And here it is right here, plus y hat. But if I go opposite the direction of circulation, like um, like z hat cross y hat, well, then that should be x hat, the third remaining unit vector, but I went opposite the direction, so it should be um, negative x hat, as it is here. And so this is a useful mnemonic that we'll use in calculating these big cross products, and it's best to see this with an example to make sense out of it. So here's an example we can take a look at with this cyclic right-hand rule method. And so we have um, two vectors that we're taking the cross product of, and we have our little cyclic mnemonic here that we'll use for calculating the cross products. 
So we've already written our vectors in x hat, y hat, z hat form. So what we want to do is FOIL everything out, um, and then we'll take the cross product. So here I'm FOILing these terms, so 1 times 2, so multiply them. And then we also carry an x hat cross an x hat. Um, the next term is this uh, 1 times 7, and then we carry an um, x hat cross y hat. Uh, next up, we have 1 times negative 4, and we carry an x hat cross z hat. Um, now I'm going to move to this term and multiply it by everything. So carry a y hat cross x hat. And then here we have a y hat cross y hat. And negative 8 times negative 4, there we have a y hat cross z hat. Now with this term, so we have a 3 times 2 z hat cross x hat. Then we have a 21 z hat cross y hat. And then a negative 12 z hat cross z hat. And so now what we want to do is we want to be able to work out um, all of these cross products. And we can do it with the right-hand rule, but it's just faster to do it with the cyclic method. Um, and so what we're going to do is we see x hat cross. And so automatically we know that any unit vector cross with itself is zero because the cross product of any vector with itself is zero. You know, two parallel vectors yield a cross product of zero. So we know that x hat cross x hat disappears, y hat cross y hat disappears, and z hat cross z hat disappears. Um, and so now we come to this term right here. We have 7 x hat cross y hat x hat cross y hat that's going in our direction, so, and the remaining one left is z hat. So this should just be 7 z hat. Uh, the next one here, negative 4 x hat cross z hat. x hat cross z hat, that goes opposite our direction. So we should have negative 4 negative y hat, or if you wish, uh, which you should, plus 4 y hat. So then we have negative 16 y hat cross x hat. y hat cross x hat once again goes against our direction of circulation. So that would be a negative z hat here. So negative 16 in the negative z hat direction. So that's just plus 16 z hat. And then we have 32 y hat cross z hat. y hat cross z hat going in this circular direction. So that's 32 x hat, the remaining um, unit vector. And then we have 6 z hat cross x hat, z hat cross x hat, once again, in our cyclic direction. So that is just 6 y hat. Um, and then finally, we have 21 z hat cross y hat, z hat cross y hat going against our direction. So this should be a negative x hat, x hat being the remaining term in this cycle. And so now we just combine everything and write it the way we're used to. And we should get 11 x hat plus 10 y hat my plus 23 z hat. And that is our answer. This is a way to achieve it fairly quickly. Well, I'll end here for this video. And now, since we learned two methods to do the same thing, two methods to take the cross product of arbitrary vectors, I'm going to encourage you, since you made it this far, to learn both of those methods and be able to do both of them, but have one as your favorite, because this will make you a powerful physicist. Till next time.